Greetings. It is I, the Great One himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, CYNLIBSOC.com on the interwebs. I was going to talk about this, then I decided I wasn't going to talk about this. Now I've decided I'm going to talk about this again. I'm going to talk about cyber statism. Along with femistatist, I believe the cyber statist are one of the greatest threats to freedom. So what is a cyber statist? Cyber statists are these fucking losers around us who are overwhelming, or maybe not overwhelmingly is not the word, excessively in love with technology. They believe that computers make everything better. These are the people who own Apple devices, these are the people who have Google Glass. These, the most distinguishing facet, the most distinguishing mark of a cyber statist is that these people are in love with the idea of the singularity. Now, for those of you who aren't losers and don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about a singularity like a black hole. The cyber statist crave this point in the future where all of human consciousness will be loaded onto computers. Basically, we'll all live on the internet as electronic signals, and everybody will be one together. And there'll be this singularity of existence. The human species will be a singularity. Now, there's a lot, and I want to talk about the singularity at some length in the future. And no, this is not a joke. They believe this. They want this to happen. And there's a lot of reasons why. For one reason, they think they're gods, and they think that once they're loaded onto the internet, or whatever the internet is going to be in the future, that they will be more godlike. They'll and and a lot of this is because they can't relate to other humans. And again, you can have interactions with other humans. All you have to do is go out and talk to other people. But cyber statists don't have any kind of social skills, and they don't have friends, and they're just losers. And so they want computers to do their socializing for them. You can also recognize a cyber status because they spend a lot of time on social media and all this other stuff. All right, another problem with... Okay, so first, here, problems with the singularity. First of all, and I do believe I've mentioned this one before, why in the fuck would you want to be one with every other person on the planet? Now, I know the answer from the cyber status perstective. The answer is that the cyber statist, the reason they're seeking the singularity so much and the reason they're so in love with technology and technology and the NSA spying on people, right? These are also the same people who, when you talk about how the NSA is reading your emails, these are the same people who will say to you, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. These people are in love with the idea of the singularity. And the cyber statist is in love with the idea of the government monitoring cell phone transmissions and utilizing the Stingray technology to get information off of your cell phones. If you don't know what Stingray is, Google it, Stingray technology. And utilize the NSA. They're in love with all of this stuff because it provides a way for them to do what statists love to do the most, which is control other people. In the singularity, when everybody's minds are meshed together, do you think there's going to be a difference of opinion? Well, of course not. That's why they're in love with the singularity. The singularity is their ultimate opportunity to control the thoughts of everyone else on the planet Earth. That's why they're so in love with this idea. Another problem with the singularity is when everybody's on the computers, who the fuck is going to maintain the computers? Who's going? Because we, I mean, we can't have a nuclear power plant, because you know the environmentalist wackos. So who's going to run the coal burning? Because you know coal is such a clean energy source. Who's going to run the coal, or who's going to run the solar cells, or whatever? Who's going to maintain these computers that all of you people living in the singularity live on? Oh, well, you know that'll be this other class of people who aren't in the singularity, but we're not going to mention anything about <laughs> slavery. <laughs> slavery. Um, <laughs> we're not going to mention anything about class system. <clears throat> class system. Class mm, system. Uh, Ubermensch. 
uh, yeah, we're not going to talk anything about how the people, although there would be one person because it would all be one identity, how the <clears throat> in the the single individual made up of individuals that would exist as the singularity would essentially become the dictator of all of the people who are still human and would of course make their decisions for them because well the singularity would know best wouldn't it just like obama knows best so the singularity this this cyber status the singularity is their wet dream it's this perfect socialist statist society in which the singularity takes all the intelligent people into it and forces them to conform to the thoughts of again it'll be the lowest common denominator because it always is anytime you have a coming together of people i've talked about this a gazillion times right if you have five people working on a school project if you have 12 people forming a committee to implement a business plan if you have an entire nation voting for who's going to be the president it doesn't matter whenever you bring a when, when you have 30 children in a classroom being taught by one person whenever you bring a group of people together for a common goal the results of that group of people will always sink to the level of the least competent person in the group it's unavoidable i mean i give you hussein obama george bush bill clinton george bush ronald reagan Okay, lowest fucking common denominator of the stupidest people in the group. There is a great TV series. It's a actually an animated series from Japan that illustrates cyber statism beautifully. And it's called Ghost in the Shell. There are various incarnations of it. There's Ghost in the Shell comic books. It's drawn by... The original Ghost in the Shaw comic books are drawn by an artist who is amazingly fantastic. And I'm going to completely fucking mutilate his name because I don't know the correct way to pronounce it. It's... Hang on. I have four of his books of his artwork. I'm pulling one out. Masumi Shiro? Like I said, I'm probably fucking that up. It's spelled M-A-S-A-M-U-N-E. It's his first name. His last name is Shiro. S-H-I-R-O-W. And he's got a series of books. I think there's five of them at least now. Because honestly, I felt like his artwork started as his... So he puts out these books. They're called Intron Depot. I-N-T-R-O-N Depot. D-E-P-O-T. I'm pretty sure you could probably find them on Amazon. And so there are one, two, three, four. And I have the first four. I think there's more. And as his art started moving more from actual drawing into Photoshop and computer-based, it's still good, but for me it lost some of the edge, and so I stopped buying the books after number four. But anyhow, his art's fantastic. And he also did another comic book series I'm a huge fan of called Appleseed. There's a Appleseed movie and there's the Appleseed comic book. So if you're hunting down, if you can hunt down Japanimation graphic novels, he's got Ghost in the Shell, fantastic. Appleseed, fantastic. Read it. And Black Magic M66, which is another great one. And there's the video, Black Magic M66. There's actually, the comic book is, I think, just called Black Magic. I think there might be two of them. I haven't looked through my comic book collection in ages. I have all of these comic books. And I can't, I may be full of shit. I think he also did Tank Police with the Puma sisters, Anna Puma and Una Puma. And if I'm right, regardless, Tank Police is also a really good comic to read. So anyhow, Shiro did Ghost in the Shell, and it really took off in Japan, and there's been a number of movies made and TV series and all this other stuff. And I'm watching the TV series Ghost in the Shell, Standalone Complex, second gig. And so I believe this was the second season, hence it's called the second gig. You know, oh, pff, so clever. Right, it's like this, it's the non-aggression principle 2.0. 
Whatever, Michael. Anyway, so the, the particular series I'm watching right now from Netflix, if you want to actually watch this, I'm going to suggest you get this and watch it because so that you can see what I'm talking about with cyber statism. It's Ghost in the Shell, Standalone Complex, Second Gig. Now, the ghost that they talk about in this, apparently in Japan, I guess what we would consider a soul is what they call a ghost. So all the references throughout this to the ghost, they're talking about that which makes people people, right? Makes us more than just bags of meat. Our personality, our intelligence, all this other stuff. So that's what that is. And watching this series, and perhaps this is indicative of Japanese culture or something like that. I don't know. I'm not an expert on Japanese culture. But the entire series is this worship of the state. Everybody... Everybody in the series, I feel like I've actually mentioned this on the podcast. Maybe I have, but I just didn't talk about it in depth. Everybody in the series, so the, the quote-unquote good guys are Public Security Section 9. It's this government organization that's all secret, and it kills people. You know, it's anti-terrorist and all this other shit. It's worship of the state. All the bad guys in the series are other politicians or other government agencies. All of the good guys or our politicians or government agencies, like all of the characters in the series are somehow related to the government. It's like the individual people don't exist. Now in this series, they have prosthetic bodies. They have cyber bodies. They have mechanical bodies. Or some people do. You can get like a mechanical arm or a mechanical leg or a mechanical eye, you know, and you can upgrade. And some people have full prosthetic bodies. That is to say, they are not biological at all. Their entire body is a machine and their ghost is loaded into it via the software. And so at this particular part in the series, I'm on disc three, one of, and this is what finally sent me over the edge and said, okay, I'm going to talk about this for a little bit. One of the members of Public Security Section 9 shot a man who had a cyber body, who had a prosthetic body, who was trying, the, the man was trying to shoot and kill his ex-girlfriend. And the cop the Section 9 guy sort of stumbled into this, and he pulled out his gun, and he shot the man who was trying to shoot his kill his girlfriend, and he put 12 bullets in the guy's prosthetic body to disable him, and then this guy, even though his body, his cyber body had 12, prosthetic body had 12 bullets, i got to use the correct terminology here so that the cyber status don't complain, the guy with the prosthetic body still managed to shoot his ex-girlfriend. So anyhow, they're in the courtroom. The police officer is, of course, on trial for shooting the bad guy. This goes to what I've always said, right? The purpose of the police is to protect criminals from the repercussions of their actions, right? Again, this is the perfect example. In real life, if a man tried to kill his ex-girlfriend, his ex-girlfriend would just shoot him and kill him first, or if he did kill his ex-girlfriend, then one of her friends or family, her father, somebody other would come and kill him and the whole thing would be over. But of course, the police show up and protect the criminal from the repercussions of his activities. And that's what the police are for. Talked about this extensively. So now, the good guy from Section 9... Oh, and of course, the lead character of Section 9 is, of course, a strong, independent woman, right? It always says... And that's one of the re things about Shiro's art you like, is he draws really hot chicks with nice tits and nice asses. But, of course, you know, their, their leader in Section 9 is, of course, a woman, which, again, completely unrealistic, but whatever. Of course, she's not really a woman because she has a cyber body. So the argument that women are not as physically strong as men and all this other stuff actually does not apply. And that's another reason why the cyber statists are so in love with the singularity, because they see it as a way of eliminating the differences between men and women, because of course they want to live in an androgenized world where there are no gender differentiums. Right? That is, again, a fucking fantasy. You look at any overly status society, right? the Soviet Union for example. We don't want gender differences. So anyhow, 
Section 9, headed by a woman, but she's not really a woman because she, she has a prosthetic body. She just has her mind. Her mind is all that exists of her. She has, to the extent of my knowledge, in the context of the series, in the context of the mythology and the story, she does not have a biological body anywhere in existence. She exists essentially only as a computer program, as this ghost that goes around from prosthetic body to prosthetic body to computer to internet to prosthetic body. So anyhow, the cop who shot the bad guy who does not have a prosthetic body, he is completely human, he has no prosthetic parts whatsoever. He's in the courtroom standing trial because he shot a man who murdered another human. And of course, again, look, this is the real world. The man who actually murdered his girlfriend He's not on trial. He's not in trouble at all. He's got the best fucking lawyer money can buy. But of course, the Section 9 guy who tried to protect the woman, he's on trial for harming this poor, innocent man with this prosthetic body. And in the course of the courtroom discussion, it, it, the courtroom, I got to tell you, got to be honest, th this is brilliant because it's exactly like what you would expect. The bad guy's lawyer brings up, well, you knew my bot, you knew my client had a prosthetic body, didn't you? And he's like, yeah. Says, so you're discriminating against prosthetics. You're discriminating against people who have prosthetic bodies. And the Prosthetic Body Discrimination Act, I'm not making this up. This is in this is in there. There is a prosthetic body discrimination act in this fictitious world where you can't discriminate against people for having and they're using that to say this is you, know, you didn't shoot this man 12 times because you were start trying to prevent him from killing his ex-girlfriend no 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 you shot him 12 times because you're racist sexist and homophobic and you hate people who have prosthetics because he is, of course, number one, he doesn't have prosthetics, and, 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 wait for it, he is a white, well, all right, Japanese, but he looks white in the series, because in the Japanese, Japanimation, most of the people actually look Caucasian, but he looks Caucasian, actually, he does not look Japanese, and I know I'm trying to give ethnicity to an animated character, okay, I get that, but he looks white, he looks Caucasian, He's a man, he has a job, and he's heterosexual. We know this because he has a wife. He's actually married to a woman who has a child. So he is a white heterosexual man with a job who is married to the mother of his children. And what is he being told in the courtroom when he shoots this guy 12 times to prevent this guy from killing his ex-girlfriend? Well, you're racist, sexist, and homophobic. Where the fuck have we heard that before? They're, they're the entire fucking agenda of the femistatist, of the cyberstatist, racism, sexism, homophobia. It all boils down to that. So here's some more. So anyway, it's just, just, when that happened, it just I'm like, all right, I have to fucking talk about this. What do we get? If you sit down and you start watching Ghost in the Shell, Standalone Complex, second gig, what will you see? Here's what you will see. You will see this love affair with power and government. Everything in this series revolves around the government and revolves around politicians. Politicians move everything, they control. And all through this thing, there's, this, there's these attempts at philosophical discussion where people talk about where, I shouldn't say people, where these government employees in Section 9 and other government agencies and the politicians talk about how the people need to be told what is best for them, how the people need to be provided for. It just oozes statism. It's also, it's filled with all of these government agencies. Again, it's this desire that the common people have, of course, for there to be a government agency for everything. They always need a government agency to solve every problem they've got. And there's all these layers of government. And there's this constantly throughout the series, there's this idea that people need external controls. That other people need to make their decisions. Other people need to set their limits for them. Because people are too damn stupid 
to make their own decisions, which is interesting. Again, think about this from an evolutionary biological perspective. You know how I talk about the way that dogs are the only animals that can't take a shit on their own, right? Because I live surrounded by dog owners here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins, where, by the way, it's currently monsoon season. It's rained to some extent every day for the last week. You know, I have to listen to these people all the time from a distance. They take their dogs out and I hear them talking to their dogs. Yeah, I know you've heard this before. They go, oh, oh, okay, go poo-poo now. Go poo-poo. Oh, good dog. Oh, good girl. Good girl. You went poo-poo. I mean, the dogs are so, this is why I keep talking about dogs are retarded wolves. Dogs are inbred wolves. Dogs are fucking retarded. That's why stupid people love dogs, and this is why dogs are fucking statist, and cats are anarcho-capitalist, because cats can take a shit without your assistance, because cats have brain cells, because they haven't been in inbred to the point of retardation like dogs have. And I know everybody thinks that cats are the stupid ones and dogs are the smart ones. Sorry, this is something all of you are wrong about. You're all wrong about this. Even you, Aaron Clary. Aaron Clary said... I've watched a number of Aaron Clary videos lately. Aaron Clary said something brilliant. This has nothing to do with any of this, but I just want to throw this out while I'm thinking about it. This is going to become part of my standard repertoire. And so I want to give credit for it, because in the future you're going to hear me saying this over and over and over without giving credit. So I want to credit Aaron Clary with this right now, and then I'm going to steal it from him and pretend I came up with it. Aaron Clary said something to this effect. He was talking about girls. And he said something to this effect. So pretend I'm Aaron Clary now. I'm going to paraphrase what he said. When you look around in nature and you see these animals, and the animals have bright colors and patterns and spines and thorns sticking off of them and stuff, they're doing this. They're not trying to blend into their environment. They're standing out from the environment. And they're doing this because this is a warning to the other animals around them that they are poisonous and they shouldn't be fucked with. And this is what women who are covered in tattoos and piercings and have the orange hair, they're doing the same thing. They're doing all of this to make themselves stand out so that people around them will look at them and realize that they are toxic, they are poisonous, they are dangerous, and they should be avoided. That's the end of me paraphrasing Aaron Clary. That is one of the most brilliant analyses of tattooed, pierced women I've ever heard because it, it makes perfect sense. They're all fucked up in the head and the more piercings and the more tattoos, the more fucked up they are. And it makes total sense. It, it's, it's nature, it's biology. It's them announcing to all the animals around them, don't fuck with me because I'm toxic. It's brilliant. Has nothing to do with cyberstatism. Okay. So just as dogs are the only species that need somebody else to stand there and tell them they did a good job taking a shit because they can't shit on their own, humans, think about this. Think about this. Think. I know it's hard for those of you who are fucking cyberstatist and femistatist. Think about this. Humans are the only species on the planet that can't survive without rules being imposed upon them by other members of their species, yet at the same time claim to be the most intelligent species on the planet. You don't see any other animals have to form governments and then form agencies to force the other animals of their species to behave the way the government animals want them to behave. Because animals can figure out how to do shit on their own. Animals like a, a flock of crows, that's a murder of crows, they can figure out how to behave and how to interact with each other without a government. You have a pride of lions 
Is there a hierarchy? Yes, but remember, hierarchies are patriarchal. And femistatism teaches us that hierarchies are evil. Unless, of course, it's the government hierarchy, because when Obama is at the top of the hierarchy, hierarchies are actually a good thing. Right? But so, a pride of lions. They have a hierarchy, but they don't need a government. They don't need government agencies. They don't need laws. And all this. They can figure out how to exist as a group of animals to cooperate with each other and do stuff. And yet here, humans constantly make the argument that we're so fucking intelligent, yet at the same time, well, statists make the argument that we're intelligent and that some, you know, that everybody is equal, but of course that some humans, like Obama, are more intelligent and therefore should be in the position of telling all the other humans how to live their lives. And this, the ultimate manifestation of this, is the singularity, that which the cyber statist craves so much, a society in which everything channels through computers, where there is no money, where, there, where, you know, where, where all information goes through a computer network. There is no written books. There's no information that's not in digital form, be it money, be it you know, f records, be it books, be it information, whatever it is, everything is in digital form so that everything that happens can be monitored by the singularity. And these people are fucking sick. Just watch this TV series. And I mean, it's it's an amusing series. I mean, there's some action and there's like it's cool artwork and there's action and things blowing up and all this other stuff. But just watch this series and look for all the statism and all the... Oh, and then of course there's these refugees from somewhere that are in Japan and well, the government's got to decide what we're going to do with these refugees. Again, because the government owns these people's bodies, right? The government puts the refugees in these refugee camps. Oh, yeah. Yeah, refugee camps. Ooh, there's some democracy and freedom and you know, nothing statist at all about taking people who came from another country to Japan and putting them in camps. It's, it's, it's pure, I got distracted for a second there. It's pure, pure cyber statism. Watch the series and you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about with the cyber statism. <sighs> All right. So remember, stay away from the computers because the computers are watching you. Right? That, I should have done that in a... Can I, I can't really do an Alex Jones impersonation. I haven't watched Alex Jones in a while. So I'm, I'm trying... I'm in my brain trying to bring forth the sound of his voice. Yeah, I got no I can't do that. I can't do an Alex Jones impersonation. <sighs> Technology. Oh. And this goes back to I did a I did a podcast many moons ago which it's on the YouTube's, it's on the website. It was titled something like The Internet doesn't make you freer, it makes you more of a slave, something like that. And some fucking moron left a comment on YouTube about how stupid I am because I think the internet decreases freedom instead of increasing it. And no, this is the point. This goes back to... Yes, I... Hold on. I'll fucking point my mouth at the microphone while I talk. This goes back to... That concept. Yes, putting all of your information on the internet does make you less free. It makes it easier for the government to monitor everything you do and say. It makes it easier for the government to come after you. It makes it easier for the government to collect you. It makes it collect you as in put you into a cage. It makes it easier for the government to spy on you. No, it's just that you can fucking argue this all you want. The advent of the internet and digital technology has not increased the amount of freedom people have. Nor has it increased the amount of information available. The only information available on the internet is the information that has been put on the internet. And the information is put on the internet very selectively. 
Information people don't want you to have access to isn't going to find its way to the internet. Furthermore, information on the internet, because it's in digital form, can be changed at any time. When you have a book, a written book, and there's information written in there, and then you publish 10,000 copies of that and they are disseminated across the country, nobody can go around to 10,000 copies of that book and change what's in there. It's there. It's not going away. The internet, you put some information on the website. You know, global warming is the perfect example of this. All the time, the global warming data gets changed in order to make it look like global warming is actually occurring. Because all the information is digi in digital form, the global warming wackos just change this stuff whenever they want, and there is no permanent record anywhere that you can look back at and go, hey, you know, this is not what was being said all the time ago. So the internet, because of everything about it, because everything on the internet can be monitored, everything on the internet can be traced, everything on the internet can be altered, just you know, against the 1984 where you sit around and you change all the newspaper articles to reflect what the government wants to be true. The internet has made that a reality. And cyber statism is a powerful force because the statists recognize, the statists completely fucking recognize all of this as being true. They recognize that the internet is the way they can achieve statism. It's the way they can tell what is everybody saying and thinking based on what they put on Facebook. Did you know that if you start typing something into Facebook and then decide you're not going to post it so you delete it, Facebook still keeps the information you typed in to your status update? The internet gives the statist the perfect tool to track what people think, what they believe, where they go, all this other stuff. It's total information awareness. The internet gives the statist the ability to change what you think, to control the information you have access to by controlling what is on the internet in the first place, and by, of course, working with search engines like Google to make sure certain search results go to certain places and avoid other places and all this other stuff. The internet, contrary to what and why do the cyber statists tell you the internet leads to more freedom? Because the cyber statists know the internet leads to less freedom. And that is ultimately what their goal is. They are statist. They are interested in less freedom, less individuality, less dissent, less knowledge. And this is why the cyber statists cream their little panties over the singularity because the singularity is this one enlightened being lording over all of its slaves. And that, to the statist, is what they think the perfect society looks like.